Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Rich. Welcome back to the channel. You read the title. We're going to be taking a look at some very useful tips and tricks with the iPad paired up with the Apple Pencil. Now, I use a lot of these, I guess you could call it secrets, to add on to my arsenal as a highly intelligent student. <laughs> I'm actually struggling a lot and the semester just started, bruh. Anyhow, enough jibber jabber. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first one is an easy one. It's split screening. If you open up an app that you know you want to work on, you can tap the three circle setting at the top and it will open up split view. This is useful if you're typing up a paper and you need a second source to go off of, or maybe you just need two windows open up simultaneously. Now if that's too much for you, fear not. You can also just pull up the menu bar from below and move one of your apps from the dock and there. Hopefully that's a little bit easier. The next tip on the list is shape recognition. This is really cool. What this does is it smartly recognizes the shape you sketch out and cleans it up. Say for example, you want to draw a perfect circle. <laughs> Let's face it, that's, that's pretty hard. Simply draw the shape and hold the pencil down, then it will fade into a perfect circle. Now this works for a lot of other shapes too, like rectangle boxes, triangles, and more. So, you know, get creative with it. Redoing and undoing is part of human nature, you know, we tend to mess up a lot and most of us are going to reach up to the top corners to hit those tiny arrow buttons to save that. But did you know, you could also just use three fingers and quickly swipe back and forth to do the exact same thing. Okay, so let's talk about note-taking shortcuts. If you swipe your Apple Pencil from the bottom left corner of the screen, you can make a super quick screenshot. From here, you can choose if you wanna save parts of the screen, uh, maybe you wanna do and save the full page. You can crop it around, add some text, draw on it, do whatever you'd like. But if you swipe from the bottom right to the center, you can pull out something called a quick note. Now, this will pull up a blank sheet where you can quickly jot down anything you'd like. You can maybe add a picture there, you can add a link, and so forth. And if that wasn't quick enough for you, let's say your tablet is currently off. Go get your Apple Pencil and hold it down anywhere on the screen. Then your notes will pop up automatically. This is super useful as whenever I'm in lecture, the professor could go through some information and maybe I didn't have my tablet notes pulled up at the time. The instant note feature can save me in a pinch. It's as if I was writing on, you know, a simple pen and paper. It's, it's so easy. Scribble. Scribble is another popular feature that has lately been added into iPad OS. Now I'm sure that you've seen that you can use your pencil to handwrite in any text to convert it into type. I don't really need to explain it here on video, but Apple's very own scribble section in the settings tab does a great job letting you interact with it. But as you can see here, there's a lot of very useful tricks which I think are essential for you to learn before anything else on this iPad really. Uh, you know, crossing off words here, you can delete some text, you can select a section by drawing a line over it, you can also insert spaces, letters, and anything else by tapping and holding, joining, and deleting. If you do currently have an iPad with you with the Apple Pencil right now, go in the settings tab, try out Scribble for yourself, uh, it's really, really useful. Sometimes the greatest tips and tricks are probably built right into your iPad already. <laughs> Double tap. No, not double tap from, you know, Call of Duty Zombies. Yo, hit that like button if you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, double tap is an essential feature on the Apple Pencil. This allows you to switch from your pencil mode to eraser, and you can quickly erase anything and switch back into your pencil mode. It's a really useful feature, by far probably the best out of anything else. But there's also a couple more features in the settings tab once again, which allows you to pull up the current tool and the last tool used. You can also show the color palette, and if you're getting a little bit more personalized with this device, I could totally see somebody using these features. Uh, but for now, the eraser option is still the best for me. Okay, so next is resizing your keyboard. If your keyboard is too big to type on the iPad, uh, fear not. You can resize it down to the size of a box that's similar to the size of a phone keyboard. Uh, simply just use your fingers to pinch in the keyboard to resize it, and if you want to put it back to its normal position, you can enlarge it with both your fingers, or you can just move it down to the original location, and I think that's really neat. Another cool feature is pasting through devices. Now this is a really nice feature as you know everything is synced through the iCloud so if you have something like a MacBook, an iPhone, you can copy just about anything as it will save onto your clipboard and you can paste it too. This is really nice if I have some photos on my iPad or Mac and I want to transfer it between devices. You gotta give credit to Apple for uh, making a pretty intuitive software. The next feature is YouTube picture in picture mode. Okay so maybe you want to watch a YouTube video uh, on one of the corners of your screen while doing something else 
else. You totally can. You have to make sure you head to the desktop website of YouTube, um, not the app. You can do this by launching up Safari on your iPad and from there, tap on the double A letters on the search bar, click on request desktop site. And what this basically does, is it just converts the current site to a desktop site as if you were seeing this on a regular computer. Now you can full screen the video and on the top left corner, you can tap this little icon, which is going to make it picture in picture mode. It's totally up to you. Um, you can also resize the window, move it across the corners of your screen, do whatever you like. The last tip I have for you guys, which I use a lot, is the uh, website preview. Website preview is a nice addition that's not only on iPad, you can also do this on your iPhone, but you can just tap anywhere and hold down a website link using your pencil or fingers to get a quick little preview of, you know, well, the website without going into a new screen. This is really useful when I want to take a peek at a website before jumping into it, just to find out that this isn't something I was looking for. But hey, try those for yourself. Uh, they really helped me a lot. Anyways, that's all I got for today's video. Hopefully you found a lot of these tips and tricks useful. I think I said useful a lot in this video. <laughs> Nonetheless, if you did learn something new in this video, make sure to give a like and comment down below, uh, you know, anything. Tell me which feature is your most favorite. Tell me which one you use the most. Um, did you learn anything new today? Other than that, hit that subscribe button for more content in the future. And until next video, guys, I will see you then.